Folks, away we go. It's the NHL Pick Show. Glad to be with you here at BetUS. We have paid all our bills. We're not going to get evicted. Um, we're going to be able to talk. About it. <laughs> Good one, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, seriously? All right. The NHL better be bailing Arizona out pretty fast. That's absolutely incredible. Brian Blessing, Dana Lane, we're in Las Vegas. Alex White's joining us. I did it again, Alex Smith. Yeah. Two days in a row. You, you, you know, the, you know the, the, the hilarious thing, you talk about like a mental block. The, the, her name is Alex White. She does football games with me. As God is my witness, I'm just getting even because – about three years ago, I called her Alex Smith a couple of times. <laughs> so <laughs> related I, to the quarterback, of course. I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> getting even. Alex Smith is here. Uh, we're ready to rock and roll. Some really good games, interesting games on ice in the NHL last night. Boy, that was a hockey game here in Vegas. Dallas, a seven-game winning streak. And you just think of some of these things that have been going on, guys. And Dallas... Basically, Sagan, Sagan's got a 5-2 lead on his stick, misses the net, and then Vegas scores two goals in the blink of an eye. Vegas comes back and wins the game. Uh, that was a roller coaster ride. But, boy, that was that was big-time hockey. It's fun when those games show up in the regular season. You go, yeah, that was a real hockey game. Well, for me, Brian, I mean, it's, it's great to see because Vegas is probably going to have to win a handful of those or more than a handful of these games uh, to push themselves further in into in the standings because you know I just don't think that they have the goaltending that's going to steal games for them on a, on a, on a ton of occasions. So you know we saw we saw Leonard get pulled for a second. There was some some booze, which it's just it's ridiculous when I hear that stuff because it just this is a guy that really needs the support. But in fact. I, if I'm Robin Leonard, I, I'm not sure how he enjoys even playing here, but gets the W, and I guess that's all that counts. Well, I mean, well, we've seen he's not the first goalie. I mean, all three of the goals he gave up, there's a legitimate case that he none of them were his fault. There was traffic on two, and the third one, he had the glove there, and it was tipped. None of them were his fault. DeBoer yeah. said, so, said as much after the game. We've seen coaches do that before, Alex. I mean, he literally, he pulled Leonard knowing the, the, the only thing, the only reason it's a story is because people love Flurry so much and there's still a faction. The only Ridiculous. reason it's a story is that there were a smattering of booze. I mean, it's not like Pete DeBoer did something outlandish. We've seen coaches do this a thousand times just to wake the team up. And it did. It woke them up. And, you know, and Brassois was fine. None of those goals were Leonard's fault. There's no problems with the goaltending in Vegas. Yeah, and I mean, 90% of the goaltenders usually in this league throughout history have what? gotten food when they give up bad goals. Like that, or, you know, or, or, or giving goals, like I said, where they could have made saves, but that's just the moral of the story. You, you're not playing well, you get booed. Like, you can't just, you know, have kid gloves with every single goaltender, you know. And I get it, the goalies can be fragile, but, uh, you know, that's going to happen. Like I said, it, it's, it's a move to wake the team up. Uh, you know, and, and get things rolling, and, and it worked that way. And sometimes, more often than not, I've seen that. Maybe I say back in the day more, where that kind of worked in, in the favor. You know, some teams just kind of be out of it; they get a goalie pulled. But well, I mean, uh, that's the move seen, in, in general. You know? We've seen goalies go nuts when, when they don't get pulled. I mean, the Patrick Waugh yeah. thing's famous. You leave them in there, and they're getting hung out to dry. So, you know, listen, that's the way to coach. Hey, you got to give the board credit. Um, this guy does seem to push the right buttons. Dana. Oh, I, I, there's no doubt about it. Uh, I mean, anybody who, you know, has any ill feelings towards Pete DeBoer being a head coach here. I mean, it's the Pete DeBoer has done a really good job. I mean, that yeah. that's just being honest, but I mean, honestly, Brian, I, I mean, as far as the goaltending is concerned, I mean, I don't know what you think about this one, two punch, but it doesn't say Stanley cup to me. Well, well I, I, I no, Okay. I'm, that's fine. I mean, that, that was the only point. I mean, do we have a – like, when, when Flurry was a goal – when, when Flurry was here, we knew, hey, look, if they didn't play well defensively, Flurry could steal games. Right. I don't feel that way right now. And I certainly don't feel that way about about the backup. So, between Leonard and okay. Bissois, I you're not looking at Stanley a Stanley Cup combination there, uh, hence my point uh, about two minutes ago. Yeah, but I mean, you can also make the case that last year, you know, Leonard in the semis 
Leonard steals, steals, as you say, which is fine. Can he steal games? Yeah. He stole the game in Montreal, and then they came home, and DeBoer should have come right back with him, but he he played flurry. I mean, that's like the one mistake, you know, that DeBoer's made around here in a long time. Leonard's fine. I mean, you know, I, bottom line is fine. You, uh, yeah, he's fine, but when they were consistently playing the best teams in the league, I know, but, who, are but you I mean, gonna, who would you rather go with? I, I don't think it's an upgrade. I, I get we do the big picture thing, and, and and that's right. And I do it on my daily radio show. We're always, hey, look ahead, you know, every day. Where's Eichel going to play when he gets here? I mean, all those things to look ahead. But, I mean, you know, did Jordan Bennington scream Stanley Cup? You know what I mean? Goalies get hot at the right time. Is this guy capable of going on a run and putting a team Jordan, on his shoulders? Absolutely, yes. Jordan Bennington I mean, came in and lit it up. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. Well, Leonard is that not Jordan Bennington? No. Well, I, okay. Yeah, I, sure. I, I'll, I'll chime in briefly on this and, and say that I, I kind of agree with, with Dana's point that this yes, Leonard has been a, at times a world class goalie and could steal games you know throughout his career even at the earliest point when he was with Vegas. But right now they don't have a hole. They just have a question mark. They're not, they're, you know, they're not lacking in goaltending. That's, they have a capable one two tandem. But at this current rate in this current form, they don't look like they could be that that duo that could steal you uh, enough games to win a Stanley Cup. As a, as a collective and a duo, yes. You know, it's not, oh my God, they got this great one-two punch. Right. You know, yeah, at the at the end of the day, though, Leonard's never been the guy. You know, I mean, he's the guy. He's not looking over his shoulder. You get to the playoffs, yeah. Leonard's playing every night. It's, you know, it's, we're apples and watermelons. It's, a, it's listen. Boy, he was the guy in New York. They weren't that good. He was a Vezina finalist. I know, but they that team was, I mean, He was again, the guy. On this team, <laughs> when they get to the playoffs, uh, you know, if, if goaltending is a question with most teams, goaltending is one, uh, one of the questions with Vegas. There's no doubt about it, but uh, it, it was a fun hockey game. That's, that's right. Okay. All right, we got a games tonight. We'll be here with you again tomorrow. And let's get the fun started with Tampa Bay and Toronto now. This is big boy hockey, and this is certainly a matchup we could see down the road uh, in the postseason. And we're looking at the Leafs on home ice, a dollar thirty-five favorite. And this is the interesting thing for me: the total is five and a half, and it's just one of those where we sit there and say we see soft numbers, uh, you really disagree with a number. This total, with the offense that's out there, and I know Tampa Bay doesn't have their full enchilada, but the way the Leafs are scoring, every once in a while, the total's telling you something. And, yeah. it, it, and you know, it, it just it looks so foreign to the eye. Dana, you got to play on this one. Yeah, I mean, and you're right about that. I, I saw a six early, early this morning. So that's the number that I went with, and it makes me squeamish to, fa- to, say, to see that five and a half because you're right. In a lot of cases, the number does tell you something. And in fact, that five and a half doesn't make any sense at all. I, I know both goaltenders have been fantastic this year. This is uh, certainly will not be an under pace game. I mean, the Leafs are a team that takes 35 shots a night. We know Tampa Bay, even at less than full strength, is still one of the top offensive teams in the league. And the Leafs just gave up four goals to Columbus. So I can't imagine what they're going to do uh, against Tampa Bay. Now, recent history or history this year for Tampa, they've scored three goals or or more in 12 of their last 13 games and four goals or more in nine of their last 19 games. So they're going to do their part tonight. I think the pace is going to be certainly is going to certainly face the or or, uh, certainly be a pace that that would say go with the over. But I can't stand this five and a half. It makes me real squeamish and. By the way, even to throw some gasoline on it, you know, the overs five and one when the lightning face teams that are above 500. So everything to me says over when it was six, but that five and a half, I mean, that's that six cents that you get when you, yep. you've been in Vegas for a long time and you've looked yep. at numbers for a long time. That just kind of makes me a little bit squeamish, but I mean, it's you're going to ask two teams to do something that they're not used to doing, and you're going to ask two goaltenders to basically stand on their head because I think that they're going to be plenty busy tonight. So I'm still well, going to go with the over, but doesn't make well, me happy. 
you got two goalies that are more than capable of doing it is the is the point with Campbell yeah. and Vasilevsky. Yeah. But to Dana's point, that's why I mean I'm reading the number initially, Alex. He's right. It's that there's that spidey sense where you, you're sitting there yeah. and you, you you look at something and say, that's a bad number, that's a bad number. What is that number? That like that number is trying yeah. to tell you something, and it's like it, it, it looks too good to be, to be true, kind of thing. Yeah, it, but at the Alex, well, yeah. it, one one second too. What sure. what was the? It was five and a half, and it was twenty five to the over. Uh yes, I think there were, or 15. okay. See, and that's the other thing too. Again, at, at six, and I was getting minus a dollar five. I liked that a lot better. I'm not really in the market of, of giving up a dollar twenty-five, although I have to keep it an official play. But also keep that in mind too. I, I don't. I'm not trying to build bankroll laying a dollar twenty-five. So well, sorry, Alex. No, that's fine. I, I mean, and look, yeah, looking at the market, you, it, it, you have to really kind of shop around with this because I'm seeing where you'd be laying a dollar seven. I'm seeing actually one spot where it actually might be uh, plus uh, or close to even money. So. That has to kind of change a little bit, and I get exactly what you both guys both are saying in the sense of you know, like I said, you have that that sense where you know we see numbers being off, we see it all the time. But I think serious history plays a lot into this as well. That we've seen six and a half and even sevens with these two teams in recent years. So a five and a half is it seems kind of almost trappish. Like oh, okay, wow, why the why is this only five and a half when we've seen yeah. as high as seven? And then you look at the the you know, what happened in those games that were lying six and a half and seven. A lot of them ended up being two one three two games because, like you mentioned, Brian, these are two teams that could see each other in the postseason. Granted, Toronto makes it out of the first round for a change. Uh, and Jake Spez is out. You know, Spez is out. He's he's not worth a half goal of the total. Let me tell you right. that. <laughs> exactly. So so I think there's I think there's a kind of like a, a clash of of. Uh, series history and current form kind of coming together. So, you know, it depends on, on, on what your style is. I, I'm someone who likes to take both into consideration. Uh, so if I had to go with anything, I would look at it over five and a half just because of the current form, not exactly what we've seen in the series history where, oh, everybody's expecting goals, and then all of a sudden they said goaltenders standing back and forth in their heads. I think these two teams will have enough to at least get that over that five and a half where a six or six and a half I would stay away from. I just want to add to that, too. It, do, do you know what a no-way no, no way guy is? A no-way guy is the guy at the sports book that will sit there and loudly be talking to his buddies in his tracksuit saying, there's no way this can't happen. And I feel like this is a, this is a game that that guy would be saying, there's no way at five and a half that that won't happen. It just it yeah. makes me squeamish. I don't I like it. to lay a dollar twenty-five. I'd rather be in a six minus a dollar five. I, you learn something every day. Here, after all these years, Alex, I thought a no way guy was a guy that would put a twelve foot Christmas tree into a room with ten <laughs> 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 Yeah. Awesome. That, well, let, let me that stay, work. Let me just tell you, the Angels staying in the box this year. <laughs> Dana, Dana, hold up your hold up your hands. You still got ten fingers. Last I heard uh, the other day, you were pulling out a saw. Uh, they're actually they're covered in pine needles, so it's it's fine. <laughs> All right, Dana's got to play on the Lightning and the Leafs, and he's got to go over the five and a half. And again, I mean, it's a number. You sit there and go, yeah, you know, the, the crazy thing is, Dana, that game could be. Three, two after one, and you're sitting there laughing, you know? Or it's, 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 Could be. It's, but then the know? other factor is, you know, Tampa Bay's been no uh, no stranger to the penalty box this year, and I'm not sure, yeah. I, you know, I want to put ta uh, Toronto on the power play too many times. And, yep. you know, I mean, it's, everything points to the over, which makes me want to go hide and, you know, put the covers over my head uh, and hide under my 10-foot well, Christmas tree. I'll watch the game. I'll root you home. I'm watching it on mute. I mean, I, I root, unless I bet it, I'm always rooting for Leafs games under because I just don't want to hear the Hall & Oates song. It's, it's, oh, uh, that is one of the worst goal songs in the league. Isn't that the, the most league. annoying goal song <laughs> in the sport? Yeah. Terrible, Good terrible. Lord. All right, let's go to Chicago and Montreal. And in this spot, we got the Blackhawks favored in the game on the road at $1.30, and the total is 5 and a half. And the juice pretty significant here. It is under five and a half minus a dollar thirty. And you know, clearly these are two teams massively disappointed how their season has gone. Montreal six, eighteen, and three. 
It's been a complete dumpster fire, front office changes, uh, completely out of sorts. You had a kid, Caulfield, who was like, oh, my God, you've got Suzuki and Caulfield. And look where we're going to go. And, you know, the poor kid, he ends up getting sent to the minors. I mean, they've driven off a cliff. Chicago was the same thing, although they've reached a level of respectability playing 500 hockey of late, 914 and two overall, still tons of work to, to be done. And honestly, only five and five in their last 10. But Alex, that's been an improvement for the Blackhawks. Yeah, it has. They've been alternating wins and losses throughout the last 10 games. And some of those losses, you look at those final scores, they're a bit misleading, uh, especially that last game, 6-2 against uh, the Rangers at home. And the Rangers end up uh, pulling away, getting three of those late in garbage time. But they they did not put up uh, a, a solid full performance uh, in each of these last couple of games. And I think now... Hitting the road, we talked about it all the time. We talked about it with Montreal specifically about how sometimes getting on, on the road can can change your game around a little bit, uh, give you a fresh start, a fresh pace. I think that's what we see from the Hawks here tonight. Uh, it's right at the threshold of a dollar thirty. I wouldn't lay any more than that. And if it got any higher, I'd probably look to take a shot with them in regulation. Uh, we know how Montreal has been. You know, we talk about how Montreal, if they don't get three goals or more, they're not going to win games. Uh, so, you know, wait to see who's going to be in goal. I expect for Flurry to get the start here for the Hawks. Uh, I think they'll be able to get two points here. Derek King really has this team playing much better defensively. They just now got to start getting that offense and that power play going. The power play looked great at the beginning of the year when Colton was running things, which was a shock because Hawks power play historically has been terrible despite all the great offensive talent they possess. Uh, so maybe King can get something rolling with that, that front, especially on the power play. And again, it's been, boy, a lot less reliable uh, than past years with the goalie information. I am seeing Lankin enlisted. So, um, and Lankin in 2 4 and 2, goals against 3 1 9, save percentage just under 9. Uh, but but the, for whatever reason, Dana, this year, you know, we're seeing a lot of stuff. And then, you know, about two hours after we do the show, we get a couple of goalie changes across the board. There's been a lot more fluctuation in the, the goalie information this year. Yeah, it's really difficult. I mean, you've got to have really some some decent insight into a, a number which may tell you who's going to – I mean, somebody knows who's starting or somebody has a pretty good idea. You know, I just – you know, we, we beat this drum all the time. I mean, I – if you put a number up, why don't you put a number up that's based on the goaltender you think is going to start? Because when the number gets adjusted, it's going to get adjusted if nine but, times out of ten when you change goaltender. So but, why don't you just put it up based on the goaltender you think is going to start so we have some sort of an idea. Because nobody has more of an idea who's going to start than these books. So You're being uh, kind, though. Yeah. You're being kind. I, you know, Even when the, when the goalie changes are announced, I've been saying this for – ever moved to Vegas in 2005 and I wasn't here a year and I'm sitting here and one year I'll never forget it it was uh, Ottawa was playing at Buffalo and buddy of mine works the games on, on television and he gives me a call and he goes hey uh uh the Sens just got off the ice he goes Laleem's not out there I go oh okay cool man thanks and you know, and at the time, Patrick Laleem was playing really good hockey. So Laleem, yeah. like, okay, they're going to the backup. It even escapes me who the guy was. But then I remember it was Ryan Miller was the goalie for the Sabres. And he calls me an hour later. He goes, yeah, Miller, Miller's not out there. It's probably going to be Baron. So <laughs> here I, so I mean, hey, thanks, pal. Uh, both backup goalies are going. I mean, this is, a, this is a true story. And the total was five and a half. They didn't move a 10 cents to the over anything. Final score was 10 4. <laughs> wow. You know, I mean, so just, even when, when when that information comes, that's why hockey is such a great sport to bet because yeah. there are not these very, very often are there these wild fluctuations in line moves. Yeah. Well, I don't know how many. I mean, I would love to like kind of mirror a, a sports book director because, I mean, at that point, that it's their job to move, to change these numbers. And, Honestly, with such little handle on the league, you know, by comparison, that's it. I don't, I don't know if it's that big of a priority, and if they do move it, it's, it's going to be a deal. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's not. not. Yeah. It's not. So, I mean, hey, and, Alex, and, and the limits are lower on hockey. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so maybe they just put it up and they think, yeah, whatever happens, unless there's a major injury to a top three guy, you know, maybe that's right. it. But 
other than that. Alex, I, I got to ask you, man. I mean, you got your pulse on, you know, the local media there in Chicago. I mean, is everybody giving Jonathan Taves a pass? I mean, he continues to be rolled out there in the top line. And, you know, let's be honest. I mean, this guy hasn't scored a, a goal since the first week of March in 2020. And I know he's had some issues, but and I know they're stuck with a huge contract. But, you know, are, are the natives getting restless there? Not really. No, people have kind of given him a pass, but to use a, a phrase uh, from a good buddy of mine, you can't find him with a telescope on the ice right now, and, and it's yeah. been brutal. Uh, you know, he hasn't even been doing well in face-offs, which is kind of like one of his biggest strengths, and the one thing that everybody was really excited for him to get back to was that, oh, now we have a centerman who can win draws, especially win draws on power plays. That hasn't been the case, so he's been really out of sorts, and he's certainly been frustrated. You can tell by his reactions on the ice. Uh, a couple nights ago in the shootout, he mi- missed a move that he normally would yeah, make in his yeah. sleep. So, yeah, so he's got to wake up. And, and, and honestly, like I said, the things he's dealt with over the last year plus, it, it seems to really kind of still be affecting I You know, at some point, I mean, hell, you really don't want to do this to your longtime captain, but maybe Bingo. give him the night off. That's, that's, that's going to chime in. <laughs> the, the C is not a cavalier thing. It's not a little thing. Vegas came into the league. Oh, who should we make the captain? Oh, you can make Derek England the captain. No, you can't. Yeah, you're not like slapping a C so on a guy not this year, a guy next year. You know, you're gonna wait. You're gonna find out who's the face of your franchise, and you build and wrap around that. It's not something you cavalierly throw around. And yeah, he's not playing good, and we know. Hey, I mean, it, it was pretty dire his medical situation. But if you make your captain Alex a healthy scratch. That's a massive, massive issue because I mean, yeah. the guy, I mean, you, the guy can't be your captain. That means he's not, he's not. It, it's like he's not trying, or the guys can't follow him. Maybe it's just yeah. you know he's over the top. This is a, but this is a, this is a different situation because he's he's not like this, he's lost the locker room or anything like that. You it, the the thing is is clearly it's it's within him, him and between his ears. Yeah, yeah. It, has, it doesn't affect the team. So no, I, no, I no, think no. giving him one night. One night at the healthy scratch, I don't think that's going to rock the boat so much. Now, if you start benching him a few games, I'm just saying, I think maybe he needs that reset and refocus. Watch the game from the box for a night, and maybe something changes. I'm not even saying healthy scratch. I, I mean, That never even crossed my mind. I, I'm just saying perhaps second line is <laughs> something, you know? No, I know, but, yeah. but again, I, I think the broad discussion is, hey, listen, he was really sick, and we're just glad he's playing hockey again. Yeah, plus, he had but, COVID last September, too. Yeah, well, hey, and you know what? Then there's your past, Dana, because we've seen a lot of guys with this COVID stuff, you know, for the most part, oh, yeah, we don't think anything. Oh, yeah, professional. He had COVID. He'll be back in 10 days. Well, we had a handful of guys with Vancouver last year where they got really, really, really sick. You had the Rossi kid with Minnesota who was really, 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 really yeah. sick. And then they had these long hauler symptoms. And everybody just doesn't automatically shake this thing. Right. And we watched it with uh, Vegas here. Yanmark was back, but he was just out there. It took him, you know, several games to get his act together. And then, like, out of nowhere overnight, he's flying around. He's one of the most noticeable players on the ice. So just because guys are back from COVID doesn't mean that they've shaken the effects. Well, and some guys, yeah. it takes a long time. And, yeah. and, and Taze ain't no spring chicken. No, what is he, 33? 33, yeah. I mean, I'm not, yeah, and and just to clarify, he said in September he had COVID, so he's had it prior to that. I'm just saying, yeah, I mean, you gave examples of guys that are not relied on like Jonathan Taves is, and I just kind of wonder, I mean, what second line, I mean, listen, he's he's not getting 20 minutes a night anyway. And he's, well, he, he technically is playing like a high, like the first and second lines for the Hawks right now. And if you listen to Derek King's interviews, he's, he's kind of taking that old Quinville approach of juggling the lines around. He is kind of basically the second line guy. Now, when they go to the power play, he's on the main unit, but, but he's basically getting, uh, you know, some of the, especially later in games when he's not winning draws, he's pretty much getting moved to that second line. We see, yeah. kind of see him switch around a bit. So, All so right. he's under 20 minutes a night, but I can tell you that the, Chicago rushes. Uh, they look like molasses coming out of their own end. Yeah. But I but I will add this just one last thing on this pick, and and maybe you can get some plus money on the on the over on this. You know, you play a game against the Rangers, and then you come back and and play Montreal, and maybe that's like swinging a heavy bat, a weighted bat, and maybe you find some room on the ice. 
maybe you just, you know, you feel a little bit quicker because the team that you're playing is not going to grind you as much. Maybe tonight this is the way that they, you know, break out of this. But, you know, on paper, their top six by name is as good as anybody in the league. It's just unfortunate what's happening to them. All right, let's go to it. Alex has a play on the game, and he likes the Blackhawks minus $1.30 against the really struggling Montreal Canadiens. All right, let's move on, fellas. And we're going to go to a game where I think this is a bad number as opposed to, hey, what's that number mean? And that's Anaheim taking on the Blue Jackets in Columbus. Minus a dime either way. And again, I think you just kind of just ride what's been going down here. And it's to me, an incredible overreaction. We don't see these wild overreactions in hockey. In, in many instances, you're sitting there going, they've scored all these goals and, and they keep hanging five and a half. Here, there is an overreaction. You've got Gibson going versus Merzlikens, but you're getting an overreaction because Anaheim just played a 2 nothing game at Buffalo. <laughs> well, Anaheim had played the night before. Stolarz played in that game. I got news for you. There were a ton of chances in that game. Zegras had the, you know, one of the goal of the year candidates, or Milano got it, but Zegras with the flip yeah, over yeah. from behind the net. And, you know, they make they made this to, well, six, and then it's bent down to five and a half. Okay, thank you very little. I, I, I'm just looking at this. I don't get it. I mean, Columbus remains on a 13 and four run to the over. And prior to the Sabres game, Anaheim was 5-1 and one to the over. Anaheim plays an under game because they'd play the night before, and the two goalies played really well. The uh, uh, Pekka Lukanen actually played quite well for the Sabres. Game. There were tons yeah. of chances. This Alex, this is a bad number. I mean, I'm going over. Yeah, it is. And, you know, we talked about how I said, you know, do, are the books really paying attention to a lot of things? And I think with some teams and some goalies – they do just kind of copy paste what they've seen over the years. You automatically see Anaheim, you see John Gibson, then you think, okay, well, five and a half shaded, you know, somewhat to the under. Uh, that that just seems to be kind of a, a, almost a knee jerk reaction uh, to some books, and that's not the case. Like I said, when you're playing a Columbus team that has gone over in 13 of their last 17 games, uh, a five and a half, yeah, I think it is. It's, it's an outrageous number for you know pretty much half of the of the league that they would be facing. Most teams are going to be able to get some offense against. It, honestly, I mean, during this ridiculous run that we've been all, all over. I mean, Columbus is so porous in their own end. It, it's just, it's like pond hockey. It's incredible. And I got news for you, big picture, Dana. Um, Anaheim Zegras has given them a spark in Drysdale and the kids. And it's a breath of fresh air and they kind of believe and gives an older guy like Getzloff a bounce in her step. But you, all right, we started with goalie combinations. Let me tell you something. Stolars can play. Yeah. And so you got Gibson and Stolars. I don't know. I, I can see Anaheim hanging around in the standings for a long time with those goalies. And not only with their goalies, Brian, I mean, the, they are really strong down the middle and basically all four lines. I mean, they're, they're a force to be reckoned with. I mean, it is not a, a, a very, a top heavy team. They are pretty layered. They're layered pretty well enough yeah. for you to not take your foot off the pedal, but you know, for Columbus, I mean, the other night against Toronto, they did probably the three things you never want to do. You want to never want to see a team do if you're even looking at it under, and that's give up a goal at the end of a period, get up, give up a goal between the periods or at the uh, uh, at the beginning of a period, and then give up quick back-to-back goals, which they all did the other night. And their transition hasn't been very good. And even you know, you mentioned the other. The other day against Washington, we talked about that where I had the under, you had the over. But the, the problem was, I, I just, it, again, it was kind of that sixth sense thing about that game. But you were absolutely right in your assessment of they're, they're horrific in their own zone. And and their breaks breakouts are absolutely, you know, horrific. And not only that, I mean, how many times have we seen Columbus get flat-footed in a, in a neutral zone? And then when you get flat-footed in a neutral zone, that leads to... Uh, that leads to two on ones and three on twos back the other way, which you know we we saw against Toronto as well. So this is not a Columbus team that I want to go under with. 
I really like where Anaheim is right now. Not only are they strong down the middle, but they're getting terrific play from their defensemen. I mean, Kevin Shattenkirk probably has the least amount of ice time, and he's got 16 points from a defensive position. So uh, they're, they're a force to be reckoned with for sure. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I'm reminding myself, we'll be with you tomorrow. I've actually missed a couple of them and it absolutely keep kicking myself. So Saturday, Anaheim's playing at Pittsburgh. And it will be the last game of a four-game Eastern road swing. And this has been unbelievable, Alex. It, it's the teams on the final game of a long road trip, mentally checking out their heads on the plane. You know, I don't know how big a favorite Pittsburgh would be, but I might take a little shot with Pittsburgh on the puck line on Saturday. But somewhere, somehow, some way on that Saturday deal, last game of that road trip for Anaheim, teams have just not played well. So I'm yep. just mentally reminding myself tomorrow to mention that on Saturday. Right. No, and that's a great thing. To, great thing to circle, and I'll add to that. If we see Gibson play tonight, chances are we'll probably see Gibson play again tomorrow because he'd be going back to his hometown. So that may even add to that fatigue factor. All right. So this game, got to go with it. Anaheim and Columbus. I got to go over the total. And honestly, six would have surprised me in the very least. And to get the five and a half and minus twenty. Um, thank you. We'll take it. We'll run with it. Uh, I think these teams certainly can get to six goals. So we now move on to Winnipeg and Seattle. And I'm going to jump in on this game, and I'm not going to go outlandishly over the top on it. I don't think there's – there's this one's not a rocket science play. I mean, you're sitting there minus a dime either way. Uh, it's a great atmosphere in that building. And you're looking at a total that's – well, thank you. <laughs> six under – 15. Listen, Winnipeg, 5-1 and one to the over in their last six. Seattle's played four straight overs. And here's the big one. Seattle is 17-6-2 to the over. Let me say that again. Seattle is 17-6-2 to the over. We talked about this team a number of times on these shows that it looked like a team that was built to be a dump and chase kind of team, be smart, sound, counterpunch, play in your own end, count on goaltending. You watch these guys play. I mean, they are going for it. I mean, it's an up and down game when Seattle plays. And when they're in that building, these fans are nuts. There's always a buzz and an atmosphere in the building. So the players sense that vibe. That's what happened the first year here in Vegas, T-Mobile. The first year... There'd be 3,000 visiting fans would get tickets and be in there, and there'd be this constant buzz in the barn. And the players sensed that, and the games were awesome. You've got that first-year buzz in that barn in Seattle all the time, Alex, and it just lends itself to everybody's jacked up, flying, and going for it. And I, in current form, I mean, Winnipeg scoring goals in bunches. How do you not do anything but the over here? Yeah, I look back at that, that Winnipeg, New Jersey game. That was just absolutely insane. I had a buddy of mine texting me from the game, just saying, just just remarkably how crazy it was that you know Jets were out of it, then they came back with five unanswered. And it's like I said, if they keep anything, bring any of that kind of pace, even half that pace, uh, with Seattle the way they're going over, this should be a game that flies over, no pun intended, uh, with with the Jets here tonight. But they, like I said, this is just a Seattle team that. They have really kind of changed the script on us. We all thought they were going to be a defensive-minded, uh, yeah. dump-and-chase kind of team. No, they've been playing wide-open hockey. It's like they almost kind of have to because of how bad the goaltending they've, they've been getting as far as you look at the advanced metrics uh, of Philip Grubauer. It's just, oh. you know, he's just not nearly on, on, the, on the plateau that he once was at, at one point. Uh, and like I said, that with the energy of the crowd, you got, like I said, not just the energy of the home fans, but look at some of the, the teams that have come in. Obviously, Vancouver, they have a lot of fans in that area. When Chicago played there, there were a lot of red and black in, in, in the crowd. So it's the same thing like when, within Ve when Vegas, those first couple of years, you saw fans from other teams as well. That just adds to that energy. And, and, and if those road teams get on, onto a hot run, then, you know, you see their fans start to, to get jazzed up. So all of that plays into a fact. I, I like the over here as well. And Dridger, I swear I've watched him several times. I'm like, do you, you guys have an eye doctor on that team? I, you know, it's like it, he needs glasses. And anyway, at least the, the Kraken games are fun, Dana. They are, they're really fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, they are. I just don't understand these numbers half the time. I mean, I, are they really just putting a number up based on the fact that Seattle's at home and 
Winnipeg's three, six, and one in their last ten. I mean, is that really all we're really looking no, at here? No, they're because taking money. They, they, they've been taking Seattle. I don't know what it is. If it's the new kid on the block, we've seen a lot of Seattle numbers where you're like, you know, I know Vegas was hurt at the time, but Seattle came in here. I know. And with, with <laughs> the people blindly bet the Golden Knights, and and Vegas was only minus a dollar twenty and won the game. I mean, you know, I'm sitting there looking at it going, why isn't Vegas a dollar sixty, a dollar seventy? Yeah, I I just don't know. You know, I mean, if you're blindly betting the other way, I don't know why the books would give you an opportunity to bet minus a dollar ten. I mean, I've yeah. seen a little bit higher. I mean, I I, I thought this number was going to come out twenty, maybe twenty five, and to see where it's at is just it's just kind of head scratching. I mean, you you they beat Calgary. They got Vimelka against the uh, against the Yotes. They beat <laughs> Toronto. And, and New Jersey, and then even in the game against Colorado, they were ahead. They were down two nothing and came back to tie it before eventually losing. So, yeah, uh, you know, I mean, if you look at their last ten record wise, it's not great, but I don't think they've been playing bad hockey as at, at all. And they're certainly one of the teams that you could argue are going to grab a wild card spot. Where Seattle uh, is is far out of that discussion. I, I, you know, if I'm Paul Maurice and I'm the Jets. I'm kind of looking at this game as a, you know, we we look at the top team sometimes as our measuring stick, stick, and then sometimes I think you should look at the lower teams as your measuring stick as to where you're really pointing. Are you pointing up? Or are you pointing down? I'd be shocked if Winnipeg didn't come in here and take this game seriously and beat Seattle quite easily. Okay. As long as they do it emphatically with that red light spinning around, uh, be happy about that. All right, I like the over in the game, Winnipeg and Seattle. Over six, I'm, honestly, I mean, it's a, it's a game you could have pondered putting six and a half up, but six, gladly, we'll take that. One for the road on ice tonight, and that's Minnesota at Seattle. Or at San Jose, excuse me, Minnesota at San Jose. And the Wild are forty-five favorite. The total in the game is six shaded to the under. To the Sharks' credit, they're not going quietly into the night. They're still hanging around. Life after Evander Kane, who's skating around in the AHL, and they're trying to figure a way to see if anybody, and apparently there is interest in him. I would have thought, you know, maybe maybe somebody would do it, but apparently there are a number of teams looking for uh, making phone calls about Evander Kane, but there's, and San Jose said they'll retain salary to make that happen, so we'll see what comes of that. But the Sharks have been playing some good hockey. They beat Calgary the other night. That was an interesting game. And Minnesota... Coming in here, Alex, they're the real McCoy. I mean, they've won seven in a row. Let me just throw one question at you. We talk about a bowl season's coming up. We just got the dome at the end of the regular season, uh, college football. You know, look-ahead spots, sandwich games, all those things where we try to get between people's ears. You think that exists in hockey? I mean, here's Minnesota. Uh, they've got a seven-game winning streak. Yeah, okay, you're playing the Sharks. You're feeling good about yourself. But they got Vegas in the on-deck circle. And I think Minnesota kind of measures themselves against Vegas. Playoff revenge took them to the mat last year in the postseason. Could Minnesota possibly be thinking about Vegas when they're taking the ice in San Jose? I don't think it's going to be that much of a look ahead, but obviously they will be looking forward to that to that Vegas spot. Those two teams uh, did play already uh, about a month ago. Uh, so I think they're going to just play their game, you know, and then that's really the thing that Dean Everson has done uh, so well. One of the many things he's done well is, is making sure that this team is focused one game at a time, one period at a time. Uh, and he's done a tremendous job of that. And I, so I don't think there will be a much of an overlook here. These two teams historically have played some high scoring affairs. Uh, we've seen 10 and one run to the over the last 11 meetings in San Jose, six and two to the over in the last eight. I think we see goals here early and often. The Wild, we talked about how great and fast of a team they are at home. Well, they've packed that speed and, and that offense up. Uh, and they're taking it with them when they leave St. Paul. I think they, they're they going to have that offense tonight. Uh, so I like the over in the first period, and I would also lean with the full game over. What do you make of San Jose big picture, Dana? Can they, can they hang around? I don't think so. I really don't. I, I just – I don't think they're that good. I think they're still a little ways away. They've had a good start, but I think there's too many teams that we knew were going to be good in the West – 
where there's too many teams that were surprised are good in the West. And when you measure two of those teams, considering, you know, San Jose and Anaheim are probably neck and neck in that category as surprises. I mean, Anaheim is much better than San Jose. And, you know, to Alex's point, you know, this Minnesota team is is absolutely the real deal. And 13 of the last 17 games have cashed over tickets. And they haven't had a back-to-back under since the last week of October. So I don't expect to see anything different. Now, I will say this. In the NHL, I really believe this, guys. That when here when you're YouTube. talking about uh, letdowns from one game to the next, I really think that the NHL is the one sport where you don't get that, but you might get that defensively. And we saw how great they were against the Oilers. They may let down a little bit tonight with Vegas on deck and feeling pretty good about themselves in that effort against Edmonton. So I also like this full game to go over the total as well. And also keep in mind, the last time that they played, the game went under the total but there was 48 total shots and 10% of them found their way yep. to the back of the net. So there wasn't a lot of shots, but a lot of the high percentage did find its way to the back of the net. And if they relax just a little bit, we're going to certainly go, go over yep. that total. And I remember that game, Ben, Brian, I think both of us were on that over and we were waiting for those empty net goals and the Sharks just couldn't, uh, I, don't, I can't yeah. remember, oh. blank it out who it was that just completely he, he passed. He passed yeah. the puck twice. Right, exactly, yeah. And so so we should have easily cashed that over and did So uh, that definitely alludes to what Dan was saying earlier. All right, so, uh, Alex, you got to play on the game. Looking yep. for the start early in the game, go over one and a half, first period? Yes, I am. I think, it's, like I said, it'll be early and often. So if you like that full game over, grab that as well. All right, we got a question, Warner, about Dallas at the Kings tonight. Kind of started talking about what a great game Dallas played last night uh, here in Vegas. It will be Huboden going against Jonathan Quick. Dallas minus 15 cents, had a seven-game winning streak snapped. The total's five and a half. And, you know, back-to-back nights, some tired legs. I, I don't know. I mean, five and a half, I, maybe a, a, I could take a slight peek at the over, but only 15 cents on a team that had just won seven games. And honestly, make the case inside that Vegas game, they had an opportunity. The score is 4-2. The puck comes to the side of the net. Sagan's got it. And literally, I believe it was Petrangelo, barely got his stick on there, yawning net, and it went off the stick and just wide. Dallas would have been up 5-2. Bam, bam. Vegas scores two goals. Vegas comes back and wins the game. I mean, Dallas, a pretty good current form. I mean, I, I, I guess. I know it's back-to-back nights, and the Kings sitting there waiting for him. But uh, I'm, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, Dana, go first. I, I'm i shocked. I mean, I know he's been a great player, but you think, you know, things would taper off. Boy, Pavelski's good. Pavelski's really good. Yeah, I mean, I, I looked at this game, and you're exactly right about that. I mean, but as far as this game is concerned overall, I mean, I looked at it for a second. I mean, Dallas has gotten the better of, uh, the Kings in this series, especially in Los Angeles, they've won six straight times in Los Angeles. They're six and one overall against the Kings. It's just a matter of what kind of number are you, uh, you know, willing willing to play. So um, I don't. I didn't look at this any further after two o'clock in the morning. So I'm not sure where the number is right now. But again, five and a half minus fifteen Dallas. Okay, so minus. Okay, so the, the, I mean the, the money line's minus 15 now? Dallas is yeah. minus 15 cents on the road. Yeah, so, I mean, that's a fair price, right? I mean, I thought last night when I saw it, it was a little bit higher, but at minus a buck 15, that's a fair price for a team that, you know, I, I'm not afraid of playing teams that played in back-to-back nights, especially coming mm-hmm. off of a loss. Uh, they want to get right back in it and wipe the bad taste out of their mouth, and Dallas has been a good play of late. You know, the one thing they do, Alex, real quick, um, we got another game we're being asked about, but I, I was impressed, and I got to make sure it's not just a one off. Hey, like some things you're watching, Ben's a great player when they get set up, but, you know, from a speed perspective, you know, he's still a great player, but he, he's not that fast. But you know what Dallas did a great job of last night? And there are teams that are just no good at it. Their defensemen are really good at finding, dragging the line finding the shooting lanes and the defensemen are good at getting the puck through and they do go to the net. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. And and that's the thing you have to look at with, with you know, teams that are where well, they're trying to keep consistently get offense or generate offense. You want to have teams that can screen and, and move the puck well. And and the thing I look at here with, with these two teams and, and we, you know, we talked about earlier about with the goaltending, how we all believe there should be a, a listed goalie system when you're betting on, on a team. That's, that's no truer than Dallas right now. Keep in mind, Dallas is still carrying three goaltenders. So, right. you know, you, you wonder, you know, you got to wait and see for the morning skate, who exactly well, is going to be the three to shuffle hey, out. I think the, that makes a lot to do with the line. And the fourth is coming yeah <laughs> they're gonna have four in the blink of an eye all right well one other question tonight nashville at the the islanders yeah. minus 15 cents max uh the islanders favored the total is five and a half under 40 so that's pretty significant i mean like they were pondering a five there can the islanders finally you know get the champagne bottle and hit it over the bow of the ship here and christen a win I think so. I think I think they can they can rally around in that momentum of finally ending this losing streak. They got a Nashville team coming in. We've seen you know the inconsistencies with Nashville. I think this is a a, a spot and it's a price for me where I'm willing to take a small shot here with the Islanders to finally get a win at home. I mean everybody has been ragging about it. even those who watch pro wrestling. CM Punk was on AEW last night basically making. That's not pro wrestling, Islanders. sir. <laughs> that's that's well, AAA well, wrestling. Uh, but go ahead. Right. What, what did he okay. say? He, but he, he basically say? he basically said he says oh he says oh, he says call Barry Trotz I, I know why why the Islanders aren't winning and he was he was giving a, a rag to the fans but long story short everybody's giving giving it to the to the Isles right now with their new building and they want to like say christen it and uh, and get that first win out of the way I think they do it tonight. That's outstanding. All right, I, th- that Islanders story, yeah, you just sit there, you stare at that, and go, it's unbelievable. I mean, the, the Islanders, uh, we we knew Arizona was going to be horrific, but we just thought they'd pay their bills. Still funny, Brian. Still funny. I, that, that, hey, that, you know what? I got news for you. That's no joke. I mean, the, the league's going to have to step in here and, and clean that up. I mean, it, yeah, you know, well, they're going to be playing at Dollar Loan Center, so it's fine. We'll have two teams here like we should. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was, I know you're half serious. All right. I'm about 60% serious, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, we'll do this again tomorrow. Uh, it's always fun hooking up with you boys, Alex and Dana. I'm Brian. Thanks to Ollie and the entire team. And we sum it up with our selections. And, Alex, i let you go good, sir. Yeah, I got the Chicago Blackhawks laying a dollar thirty. It's a tad bit steep for my taste, but I think it's enough, and I think it's a fair price for a Hawks team that has been rolling fairly well and should be able to bounce back off of a loss. And I also have a pair of first period overs, uh, both at minus a dollar twenty-five. That's with the Ducks and the Blue Jackets, and late night tonight with the Wild and the Sharks. Dana, tell me about the overplay in Toronto. Well, thank you. I think. <laughs> so Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay, Toronto over the five and a half minus fifteen. I think. Yeah, lots of talent on the ice for sure that, tonight, yeah. and that number uh, we're still staring at it, going, "Okay, we shall see." But I mean, it, it makes sense, man. There's a lot of firepower out there, and oh, I got to go from memory while we're waiting for Dana. <laughs> there, uh, what did I have? I have uh, over five and a half. In the Anaheim-Columbus game, thank you. I mean, that's a total should have been six. And then I'll go over the total of six in the Winnipeg-Seattle game. So there you go. We got our plays in for you. want to thank the entire team at BetUS. For Dana, for Alex, I'm Brian. And listen, hope everybody has good luck on ice tonight. We'll do it again tomorrow, and we hope you'll join us then.